presentation. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'd, I'd like to call to order this regular meeting of the Lincoln Lancaster County Planning Commission of December 10th, 2014. A printed agenda is available outside the hearing room and a copy of the full agenda, including the staff report, is available at the front of the chambers with the clerk. The Opens Meeting Act is posted just inside the doors of the back of the room. <clears throat> out of courtesy for those attending this meeting, the commissioners and the staff, cellular phone usage is not permitted in these chambers during <clears throat> any portion of this meeting. We will appreciate your cooperation. If you parked in the parking garage across the street to the north, be sure to pick up a coupon for free parking. The regular meeting of the Planning Commission scheduled for December 24th has been canceled. The next regular meeting of the Planning Commission will be held on Wednesday, January 7th. Please note the Planning Commission action today is final on items numbers 1.2C, 1.4A, 4.2C, 4.4, 4.5 and 4.6. Any aggrieved person may appeal final action of the Planning Commission to the City Council by filing a notice of appeal with the City Clerk within 14 days following the action of the Planning Commission. The Planning Commission action on all other items is a recommendation to the City Council or County Board. Um, before we get started on the agenda, I'd like to take the time to acknowledge the passing of our planning director, Marvin Kraut. Um, Marvin was a tremendous asset to the city of Lincoln. He had a unique way of bringing um, people together, people on the development side, people on the neighborhood side, and of ex uh, showing uh, leadership to, in making the city a great place to live. And um, I think the, Numerous awards that Lincoln has received in the last few years are a testament to the legacy that Mr. Kraut will leave behind. We, so we would also like to take a few moments for silent meditation in memory of Marvin and his great and lasting contributions to the Lincoln community and the Lancaster County. All right, thank you everyone. The first item of business is approval of the minutes of the regular meeting held November 12th, 2014. Is there a motion? Move approval. Second. Call the vote. Here. Yes. Harris. Yes. Cornelius. Yes. Lisa. Yes. Four. Yes. Thunderman. Yes. Weber. Abstain. Oh. Yes. Yes. Motion carries eight to zero. The next item of business is the consent agenda. Items on the consent agenda will be called at the same time and will not be scheduled for a separate public hearing unless there is a request from someone wishing to speak or at the request of the commission member. I will ask <coughs> Jean to read all of the consent agenda items into the record. Once those items are read, she will ask if there is anyone wishing to speak. If you wish to speak on an item on the consent agenda, we ask that you stand and come forward and state that item. That item will then be removed from the consent agenda and <coughs> scheduled as a separate public hearing under section three of today's agenda. All items remaining on the consent agenda will be voted upon in total with a motion for approval. Jean, will you please call the items on the consent agenda? Thank you. Items 1.1 A and B are related, city text amendment 14019 and county text amendment 14020. These are amending the title 27 of the Lincoln Municipal Code and article 10 of the Lancaster County Zoning Rela Resolution um, relating to personal wireless facilities to modify the definitions of abandonment and partial abandonment to modify its administrative permit provisions and to delete provisions regarding the initial term and renewal of special permits and administrative amendments. Items 1.2 A, B, and C are related, annexation 14006 to annex approximately 22 acres, including adjacent rights of way, lo lo located at Northwest 33rd and West Vine Street, change of zone number 14031 from AG Agriculture to I-1 Industrial, Special permit number 14050 to allow a rock crusher in the I-1 industrial district. The property again is generally located at Northwest 33rd Street and West Vine Street. 
Planning Commission action on the special permit is final unless appealed to the City Council. Item 1.3 is change of zone number 14030 from H3 Highway Commercial to R2 Residential and I1 Industrial. The property is generally located at North 44th Street and Colfax Circle. Items 4.A and B are related. Special permit number 14048 for authority to allow a parking lot in the R2 Residential District located at Southwest 6th Street and West B Street. The special permit is final action unless appealed to the City Council. The associated item is Street and Alley Vacation Number 14011 to vacate the East West Alley from the East Line of Southwest 6th Street to the East Line of Lot 12, Block 5, Elmwood Edition, and to vacate a portion of Southwest 6th Street east of the center line between West D and West C Streets. Item 1.5, Street and Alley Vacation 14010 to vacate the East West Alley between O Street and N Street from the West Line of 23rd Street to the East Line of the Antelope Creek Channel. Item 1.6, Street and Alley Vacation 14012 to vacate approximately 10 feet of Y Street right of way from the east edge of North 10th Street to a line extending north from the north-south boundary line existing between lots 1 and 2, 10th and Y addition. The general location again is at Y Street from North 10th to approximately vacated North 11th Street. Are there any ex parte communications to be disclosed by the Commission on the consent agenda? I see none. And I would ask, is there anyone here wishing to speak on any items just pre read into the consent agenda today? Please um, tell us which items, sir. Okay. 1.5, Street and Alley Vacation 14010 has been removed from the consent agenda. It will be called as a public hearing, number 3.1. Any others? I don't see any others. Uh, oh. I'm not sure which item it is, but it's uh, regarding the, uh, the uh, change of zone on uh, Hillcrest Heights addition. That's on the argument. I, I don't believe that's on the consent agenda, so we will be having a public hearing on that. Right. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? All right, seeing no one, we will go ahead and entertain a motion on the remaining items on the consent agenda. Move approval. Second. All the votes, please. Chair. Yes. 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 For approval carries 9 to 0. I just want to point out that this is final action on special permit 14050. Um, 14048, both of those, unless appealed to the City Council. All right, there are no requests for deferral on today's agenda. We will now proceed to the public hearings. The staff will make a brief presentation. The applicant will then be requested to present his or her testimony, followed by those who wish to testify in support of the application, followed by those who wish to testify in opposition. The staff will then be given an opportunity to respond to the testimony and then the applicant will have an opportunity for rebuttal. Each person testifying should state their name and address and shall have five minutes to speak unless additional time is requested and granted. The timer will go off after four minutes, then you have one minute to wrap up your testimony. The Planning Commission will vote immediately at the close of the public hearing unless the Commission votes to defer action or continue the public hearing. Jean, please call the first public hearing item. Okay, we'll go back to our consent agenda. Item number 1.5 on page 59. Street and Alley Vacation 14010 to vacate the East West Alley between O Street and N Street from the West Line of 23rd Street to the East Line of the Antelope Creek Channel. The staff recommendation is a finding of conformance with the comprehensive plan. Christy, before you start, could you flip that light that's on your left just a little more straight down? Great, thank you. Good afternoon, Christy Eichhorn, planning <coughs> staff. This application is in regards to the vacation of an alley that exists just east of the Antelope Valley Creek and just west of South 23rd Street, south of O Street. Uh, Catholic Social Services owns the properties that are adjacent to the alley. 
Um, the city owns one lot that's up here at 2143. Catholic Social Services has the, um, is, is looking at doing a cafe, coffee shop, in this building, which is at 2215. Part of that coffee shop will include a drive through facility. And in order to meet the stacking requirements for that drive through facility, they would need to cross this alley, which is considered a public right of way. Design standards do not allow for them to cross that alley. This alleyway will not ever continue over Antelope, Antelope Creek. So the city had recommended to the applicant that they vacate this right of way and that we keep an easement over it because we do have an eight inch sanitary sewer main in that right of way and that um, we have a common access easement over it so that it can, t can continue to be used essentially as a driveway for the abutting properties. Does anybody have any questions? I don't see any, thank you. Do we have um, testimony from the applicant? Are you the applicant? Okay. My name is Bill Medna with uh, St. Joseph Institute and Catholic Social Services and we represent the applicant. Um, our only question is, is in the analysis item number six and then item number three for the common access um, easement for all adjacent lots. Um, we, uh, one of the ancillary um, purposes of asking for a vacation of the alley is that we have so many people and our clients coming in and out of the front of our, our offices there at 2241 O Street. So we are trying to limit the amount of any activity or driving that would happen in front of our, in front of our building. And w I guess mainly this is more of a question than really um, an issue is, is there any way that the vacation can happen without including the common access easement um, for all the adjacent lots? Um, I would imagine not, but what I may suggest is that you talk to Christy in the planning department about your issue and maybe um, she can answer the question to your satisfaction and then we can maybe move on to a different agenda item and come back to it. Is that all right with everyone? Okay, so we'll come back to you in about five minutes. Is that all right if we all vote to defer action for a few minutes? Okay, let's just move on to the next agenda item, Jean. Sure, okay, thank you. Okay, calling for public hearing items 4.1 A, B, C, and D. Comprehensive Plan Amendment number 14008 to change the future land use map in the 2040 Comprehensive Plan from the urban residential designation to a commercial designation on approximately 9.2 acres, from public and semi-public to commercial on approximately 0 0.8 acres, and from urban residential to public and semi-public on approximately 0 0.2 acres. The property is generally located at South 84th Street and Carl Ridge Road. Change of zone number 14028 from R1 residential district to P public use and from R1, R3, and P public to H4 general commercial. Item 4.1C, special permit number 14045 for planned service commercial to allow approximately 130,000 square feet of mini storage and outside RV vehicle storage, including request to modify the zoning and subdivision ordinance requirements <coughs> for rear and side yard setbacks and Street and Alley Vacation 14009 to vacate the Viewpoint Drive right-of-way lying north of Carl Ridge Road, generally located at South 84th and Carl Ridge Road. All these items are generally located at South 84th Street and Carl Ridge Road. Staff is recommending approval of the Comprehensive Plan Amendment, approval of the change of zone, conditional approval of the special permit, which with revisions submitted yesterday, December 9th, and Are there any ex parte communications to be disclosed by the Commission? I see none. Thank you. Paul Barnes Planning Department. <clears throat> As Jean had mentioned, this project has four related agenda items. And so we'll go through and talk about kind of the project as a whole, but reference each one of those as we go through the discussion. Um, <clears throat> first of all, the, the comp plan amendment um, is, is the first item to talk about. Um, this 
uh, property has been designated as urban residential on the future land use map of the comprehensive plan and has been that designation on previous comprehensive plans for quite some time. Um, and since we're looking at a commercial development for this site and this property is greater than five acres in size, um, it's typical policy that we do a comp plan amendment to reflect that land use designation um, when we have that, that change. And so in looking at a commercial use at this property, um, we ask ourselves several questions. What are the impacts of surrounding properties? Um, what's the access to this site? Um, so we have this um, kind of formula, formula that we look at. Um, and for this specific site, uh, we did recommend previously, obviously residential being a um, supported use here, but with certain restrictions and certain um, considerations with site planning, landscaping, things like that, commercial uses can be appropriate for this site and can be supported. And so along with the COM plan amendment recommendation, um, we're supporting the change of zone and the special permit, which further take a look at the site, take a look at that development and restrict not only uses on there, but also things like landscaping and siting of the buildings. So with the comp plan amendment, um, looking at the commercial designation for this property that is recommended for approval. Um, the next item, <clears throat> well, I'll put them together, the change of zone and special permit, I guess, go, go hand in hand, looking at the request for an H4 commercial zoning here, um, allows for the developer to apply for a planned service commercial special permit. Um, knowing that the planned service special permit has the ability to again, restrict what types of uses we have on this property, um, although commercial and near residential, is supported at this location. Um, the special permit is requesting up to 130,000 square feet of mini storage. Um, and the, the access to this type of a development um, is, is not through the adjacent residential neighborhood, rather through one point of access near South 84th Street, which is an arterial. And so the site plan that goes along with the special permit that's before you does show how that access is limited. Um, it also shows, I guess I'll put up the site plan here. Um, this is the site plan for the development that's proposed. <clears throat> Looking at the location, we're along South 84th Street and we have a connection off of 84th Street, which is Carl Ridge Road. And so this property, um, which is currently owned by the city, is located here um, with the uh, mini storage identified on that plan. Um, I will back up and also mention that there was a previous request um, for this property to have uh, residential units built here. This was before you earlier this year. Um, the Planning Commission did deny the request for the residential units here. Um, I think that there were a number of reasons why that was opposed, including um, the location of a, a pipeline in a hazard area, um, limited access to this site, as well as some significant opposition from the surrounding neighbors. Um, process um, over the summer, um, some things took place, and the city opened it up again for some requests for development on this site. Um, as you know, this, this property has already been declared surplus, and so that, that piece of it's happened. Um, but with the requests that were submitted, um, or the proposals that were submitted for development on this site, um, they were taken to the neighborhood uh, group and reviewed and, and presented, and the neighborhood um, did support this development out of all of those that were submitted. So a little background information for you, but that's, that's how we got to where we are today. Um, so again, looking at this commercial use um, near the residential area, this site plan gives us that flexibility to um, make sure that this use is compatible next to those, those residents that are already in the area. And like I would mentioned before, the access issue, um, really limiting that to the one point, um, which is still supported and shown on this plan, as well as um, we are recommending some additional landscaping and screening to be provided between the residential units and this commercial development. Um, the proposal from the developer um, for screening does include 
a 10 foot wall as well as a wrought iron fence and some trees. Um, in the staff recommendation, we are requesting that that be um, enhanced a little bit to provide more of that buffer and separation between the, the residents. So with regards to the special permit, um, there is a conditional approval um, and also with the change of zone, um, we are recommending approval um, with, this, with this request. Um, you did receive a motion to amend, I believe yesterday, which did clarify some of the outstanding watershed um, stormwater and drainage comments that we had for this project. And the applicant was able to address those um, to the satisfaction of watershed management. So the recommendation has actually changed to reflect that. Instead of holding off this application for city council, uh, we are recommending that this go ahead and move forward to city council um, with that modification. Um, the other thing that I will note is in that memo, we would like to add a 1.3. Uh, for the motion to amend just to clarify the change of zone recommendation and we, we would like to add that the change of zone um, is also a site specific condition for the special permit to be approved by um, the change of zone must be approved by city council in order for the special permit to be effective essentially so just making that clarification um, I believe it was discussed in the staff report but we just want to make that clear in the recommendations and then lastly, uh, there is a request to vacate Viewpoint Drive. Um, I guess I can leave this up here. <coughs> Viewpoint Drive today is a stub street um, public right of way that is located off of Carl Ridge Road. And so really the intent of this right of way is to provide access back to this larger parcel for future development. And so essentially by vacating that um, at the request of uh, the developer of this property as well as a petition from both adjacent property owners, uh, this um, public right-of-way will become a private driveway and will still serve that access to the development. I guess with that, I'll answer any questions you have. Any questions for Paul? Kathy? Paul, um, as you mentioned, um, traffic through the neighborhood had been a concern before. Can you refresh my memory with a mini storage? Are we um, looking at large trucks coming in here, or is this more likely to be small trucks? And if it is large, how often? Um, I know, you know there had been concern that folks wanting to go north on 84th might go through the neighborhood, and um, I, was, I just wondered about you know big trucks coming through the neighborhood. As uh, part of this request, we didn't require a full traffic study, mm -hmm. but we did talk to the applicant specifically about the types of vehicles and the frequency. Um, and, and they are here to speak, I think, specifically on that item as well. Okay. Um, but, but our understanding is that there would be the potential for larger trucks to come through here, but more frequently you would see the smaller vehicles coming to this type of a facility. Um, Paul, the language that you wanted for for additional men amendment 1.3 is that change of zone is a site specific condition of approval of the special permit? Yeah, if you look, let me see. So it'd be page 90 of the packet, I believe, under site specific conditions for the special permit and the change of zone. We would just like to add um, item 1.3, which is also a required um, request that needs to be approved in order for that special permit to be effective. So it would say um, change of zone to H4 commercial district, something to that effect. We just put sure. change of zone number 14028 as item 1.3, I believe. Is it 1.3 or 1.1? Well, you, 1. Need 1. At, 1. 3. you need to look at the blue sheet. Mm -hmm. It changes 1.1.1 1. 1. 1 to uh, 1. Okay. One and then there's one two and now this would be one three. Okay. The, uh, uh, the first revised staff recommendation changed those numbers. All right. Well, I was wondering about um, outlot A. It, it says in the staff report that it's currently non-buildable, but they're going to put some units on there. Um, 
Can you address that for me a little bit more? Can you tell me more about it? Sure. Uh, platted outlots are generally non-buildable. Um, they're typically reserved for something like open space or utilities or drainage. Um, in this case, um, outlot A was um, reserved for some type of future um, use, but since it's platted as an outlot, could not be built upon. And in order to build the units as proposed, uh, a final plat must be approved in order to designate that as a lot to get the building permit. And I assume that that's okay because they're putting the storage for any water type issues up kind of on the north part of the plan instead of where this outlaw is currently. I'm, I'm assuming that outlaw A was for water storage. That's why it was for not For detention? Yes. Um, that I, I, I don't know is, is, is true. Okay. With this proposal, there is a detention facility proposed in the northwest portion mm -hmm. of this site, which, which will carry and hold most of the detention for this development. And then there's also some underground um, facilities that would connect to a pipe in 84th Street. So I guess I don't understand why outlot A was non-buildable in the first place. It could have been platted as an outlot until something came along and, you know, the, the owner wanted to build. Um, it's, it's frequent that we have outlots platted for a period of time um, and then get platted later. Okay. My own. Were you, sorry. did you, did I'm you sorry, have any more there's questions? no existing topography issues of why that can't be built on? No, not that, okay. not that we're aware of. Maya? Uh, so the report <clears throat> mentions the developers plan to build a 10 uh, foot wall. Um, if, what would the minimum screening requirement be uh, for this type of development? Is that, does that go by height of, what's behind the screening and it says something about 60 at least 60 percent up to 10 feet um, in the design standards so do you have an idea of what the minimum would have been for this type of a development well we would follow the design standards for screening and that would require that there be screening provided between the perimeter of the commercial um, use and between that and the adjacent residential properties and so there's the formula that's looked at in the design standards where you, between the um, ground elevation and up to 10 feet, that a certain percentage of that area must be screened from the adjacent property. And so by providing that 10 foot wall, essentially they're screening 100% of that from the adjacent property. And 10, is 10 feet the maximum for whatever it would have been behind of there since it says 60% up to 10 feet above the adjacent ground elevation? That would be the, des that would be the design standard that's, that's enforced or, or applied to this, this situation. I mean, but, if we want something taller, you know, I think that... But, so, um, I, I'm basically wondering, in, in, are, are they basically doing the maximum that they would have to do? They, they would never be asked to do anything above 10 feet in this In terms scenario. of height, um, we haven't been, we have not recommended additional height for screening. Right. Um, I do understand with this site there is some grade uh, difference as well. So from properties on the west, the, the wall may look even taller than 10 feet. Right. Um, but the recommendation does include adding some evergreen type plant material and additional plant material throughout the site to provide um, that minimum requirement. Okay. Any other questions for Paul? All right, seeing none, we'll move on from testimony from the applicant. Good afternoon. My name is Rick Kruger. I'm the president of Kruger Development. And before I get started, I just wanted to uh, say a word about uh, Marvin's passing. Uh, I've been around for almost 40 years now, and I consider him to be the best of the planning directors that I worked under. And um, about every week or 10 days or so, I would send a batch of uh, articles from the Wall Street Journal primarily to him about development and design issues that came up nationally and internationally. And, so I'm very sad that, that he's no longer with us. So 
in regards to this, I'll just, okay, um, we're showing this, uh, the green areas being the area that is still um, uh, grassed. Uh, about 37% of the site will still be uh, grassed when we're all said and done. Uh, it's very straightforward uh, application. We've worked uh, with Paul, I want to thank him, and uh, with the other staff members on uh, creating uh, workable solutions um, on all the uh, various issues that we had. Um, as was mentioned, we met with the neighborhood. There was uh, actually three proposals that were brought forward to the neighborhood, I think back in maybe September or so. And um, we got positive uh, uh, vibes from the neighbors, and I believe they've written a letter to you in support of this. We don't have any issues with the city in regards to design items. Um, I wanted to address, uh, you had asked about the, the wall at the setback. What we've done on this is we've taken and uh, put, the, put our, our perimeter wall uh, at least at the setback, and in some cases like here, way back beyond what would be the normal setback in order so that um, we wouldn't have any light trespass into the neighborhood. Of course, we need security for our facility but we wanted to, even though the property would be out here at the back of the current neighbor's house or lots, uh, by moving it back here, they effectively, in the livability sense, they have uh, maybe a little more open space. This is something that we did out at Southridge Village, 27th and Pine Lake, the transition between the office use and the housing there on 32nd Street Court. So we've done this in the past. Um, I think Paul explained it pretty well, I wanted to touch on just for a moment on some of the detention cells. There's basically two detention cells, one here on 84th Street, which is a series of underground vaults for storage, and then that leads into an existing pipe here and then under 84th. We have our major cell that does most of the uh, stormwater detention at this point, and it drains through an existing pipe here and then down through the city storm systems. And um, so as the staff has reported, uh, we meet all the uh, standards for that. I have with me uh, Danielle Smith, who's our regional manager, and maybe I'll ask her uh, to address the traffic and the truck issue that was uh, brought, brought forward. Um, I, r I really think that's, that's about all. It's pretty straightforward, 130,000 square foot, or up to, I don't think we show exactly that much, but. Okay, any questions yeah. for Rick before we bring Dan Danielle up here to pick on her? I don't see any, thank you very much. Hi, I'm Danielle Smith, I'm the regional manager for Big Red Storage. Um, as far as the traffic count goes, um, we're thinking about 35 visits per day, which would be uh, 70 trips uh, per day. And as far as the vehicles, large vehicles, um, you know, as far as moving trucks go, we might have some smaller trucks, but um, semi-access, there would be very limited. Um, I really don't see it b being a big issue. There might be one a month or so, but not, not too much. Kathleen. One quick question. Um, so are the trucks sort of from your own fleet, or are they private trucks? How does you that? have um, a truck. It's about 14-foot truck. It would look like a U-Haul truck that we do have. Um, we own two of those. Um, we would maybe have it sitting there. A few time a few months out of the year okay. I'm just thinking you know if a neighbor has a problem are you a good person for them to contact oh, totally, yes. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Great. all right any other questions thank you um, do we have any additional testimony in support of this application do we have testimony in opposition to the application all right um, do we have any additional staff questions that weren't answered and I don't believe we need any um, rebuttal from the applicant then, so we will go ahead and entertain a motion. Okay. Calling for action, comprehensive plan amendment number 14008, changing the future land use map of the 2040 comprehensive plan. The staff recommendation is approval. Move approval. Second. Discussion? 
Um, I think this is a good project for the location. I am glad that the city was able to regroup and have a project come forward that was make the neighborhood happy, make the developer happy, and seems like a good use of the property. Um, call the vote, please. Here. Yes. Harris. Yes. Cornelius. Yes. Beecham. Yes. Four. Yes. Sunderman. Yes. Weber. Yes. Ho. Yes. Lust. Yes. Motion for approval carries nine to zero. Calling for action change of zone number 14028 from R1 to P public use and from R1, R3, and P to H4 general commercial. The property is generally located, of course, at South 84th Street and Carl Ridge Road. And the staff recommendation is approval. Move approval. Second. Second. Any additional discussion? All right, call the vote. Shear? Yes. Harris? Yes. Cornelius? Yes. Beecham? Yes. Core? Yes. Sunderman? Yes. Weber? Yes. Ho? Yes. Lust? Yes. Motion for approval carries 9 to 0. Special permit 14045 for the planned surface commercial special permit to allow up to 130,000 square feet of mini storage. The property again is at South 84th and Carl Ridge Road. The staff recommendation is conditional approval as revised by the memo dated December 9th, and I believe we added condition number 1.3 today. Move approval as amended. Second. Discussion? All right, call the vote, please. Shear? Yes. Harris? Yes. Cornelius? Yes. Beecham? Yes. Four? Yes. Sunderman? Yes. Weber? Yes. Hope? Yes. Lust? Yes. Motion for conditional approval as amended carries 9 to 0. Street and Alley Vacation 14009, vacating the Viewpoint Drive right of way lying north of Carl Ridge Road generally located at South 84th and Carl Ridge Road, and the staff is recommending a findings, finding of conformance with the comprehensive plan. Approval. Second. Additional discussion? All right, call the vote, please. Here. Yes. Here. Yes. Cornelius? Yes. Beecham? Yes. Four? Yes. Sunderman? Yes. Weber? Yes. Poe? Yes. Lust? Yes. Motion carries nine to zero. These items, all four of them, are recommendations to the city council. And I think we'll circle back to item 3.1. Okay. Calling back into session, street and alley vacation number 14010, vacating the east-west alley between O and N, west, uh, from the west line of 23rd Street to the east line of Antelope Creek Channel. <clears throat> Christy, were you able to meet with the applicant? We did, and I think that we, we have it worked out. Um, the applicant can come back up here on rebuttal. Um, but essentially, the, the purpose for the common access easement is because there are several platted lots that front on O Street. And so if these buildings at some time were to come down and were to redevelop, the city wants to ensure that they will not have to provide access to those lots off of O Street because um, we do have to provide access to lots and if we eliminate the access on the south side then we would have to give them that i think the applicant understands that they own all the properties on both sides of the common access easement so as long as um, they continue to own all of the property on both sides then they would have control over um, who can can and cannot take access from the alley thank you uh, before we have the applicant do rebuttal, I'm going to ask, was there any testimony in support or opposition to the application? Are you coming forward to testify, ma'am? Okay, I'm sorry. All right, then we will hear from the applicant on rebuttals. Thank you. I appreciate Christy explaining our concerns, and uh, all of our concerns are now alleviated, so thank you. Thank you very much. Um, if we, does anyone have additional questions? All right, I will go ahead and entertain a motion. Move approval. Second. Discussion. All right, it seems like a, a good um, use of the property and uh, a good resolution of concerns of the applicant. Um, call the vote, please. Here. Yes. Here. Yes. 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 Sunderman. Yes. Weber. Yes. Pope. Yes. Lust. Yes. That motion and for a finding of conformance with the comprehensive plan carries nine to zero. This is also a recommendation to the city council. 
Okay, we'll move back. Um, we're ready for items 4.2, A, B, and C, starting on page 117. Annexation 14007 to annex approximately 10.2 acres, including adjacent O Street and Anthony Lane rights of way. And change of zone number 14032 from AG Agriculture to R3 Residential, <clears throat> except for those portions conveyed to the state of Nebraska. And special permit number 14052 for authority to develop the Gable Pines Community Unit Plan. Approximately 117 dwelling units for independent living, assisted living, and memory care, including a request to exceed the maximum height. The property is generally located at Anthony Lane and O Street. Staff is recommending approval of the annexation and change of zone and conditional approval of the special permit. Special permit is final action unless appealed to the City Council and we have submitted a revised staff recommendation today. Are there any ex parte communications to be disclosed? I see none. Thank you. Sorry, we're passing out paper. <laughs> Paul Barnes, Planning Department. Um, so this project before you uh, has three associated requests. We're looking at an annexation, we're looking at a change of zone, and also looking at a special permit for a community unit plan and a healthcare residential facility. Um, so today the property is not within the, the city limits of Lincoln, but is abutting and adjacent to city limits um, along O Street to the north. And so this would be O Street um, here, and we have Anthony Lane that would connect with O Street um, north and south. On the east side of this property, we have the Hill Hillcrest Golf Course driveway and the Hillcrest Golf Course uh, further to the south and east. Um, this property is within Tier 1, uh, Priority B of the future growth tiers in the comprehensive plan. And being in priority B, it is anticipated to uh, become part of city limits and be developed um, up to the year 2025. So this, this area is appropriate for annexation um, per the growth tiers. Um, also, we look at uh, city utilities and city services, and can they be provided to this site? Um, we have looked at the sanitary sewer and the city water services and know that both are planned to be designed and constructed um, and will be able to serve this property um, in late 2015 or in early 2016. Uh, we understand that the developer's timeline uh, may have some more aggressiveness to it than the city's timeline for utilities. If that's the case, um, which we've noted in the plan, uh, the developer will need to work with the city to install the utilities to provide um, water and sewer to this site. Um, the change of zone requested along with this is an R3 residential district um, and is appropriate for this site, um, considering that urban residential is an appropriate land use here. Uh, we do have R3 um, zoning in Waterford Estates um, to the north of O Street, um, so it is within proximity um, and appropriate for this development. The site plan that we have shown here is what's being proposed um, under the community unit plan and the healthcare uh, residential facility. There are two waivers associated with this request. Under the CUP, um, we're looking at waivers to the private roadway standards, which is this east-west connection here that connects Anthony Lane to the private golf course driveway. <clears throat> and there's also a request under the CUP to increase the height of the building. Under R3, building height maximum is 35 feet. And with this request, they're asking to increase mm -hmm. the three-story portion of the building up to 42 feet. Um, the waivers are both supported, um, given that the um, east-west driveway is planned at some point in the future to be reconstructed as part of uh, NDOR, Department of Roads project, um, to consolidate two access points on O Street 
um, into one that would actually come off of this property. So knowing that there's a future project planned, um, having this private roadway built as driveway standards today is an anticipation of that being reconstructed in the future. Um, the height uh, increase up to 42 feet is also supported um, given that the three-story portion is further to the east from the existing single family area, which is on the west side, um, Anthony Lane. Um, and staff is recommending that um, the site plan show building envelopes in order to make sure that that taller portion is constructed to the east of the site. Um, so as was stated, this is a request for um, a development. Um, this would actually be for up to 229 persons on this site for a mix of housing units, including independent living, assisted living, and memory care. Um, and given the conditions of approval, we are supportive of this request. I can answer any questions you have. Questions for Paul. Kathy. Um, Paul, does the sidewalk connect this area to the neighborhood? I, if, you know, if there's independent living, I'm thinking folks might be interested in taking walks and staying active, and so I'm just curious how far that sidewalk goes. Yeah, we, we would like the sidewalk to connect to the adjacent um, properties on both sides, so anyone in this area could walk along that sidewalk and stroll along Anthony Lane or the golf course driveway. Other questions for Paul? Seeing none, I think we'll move on from testimony from the applicant. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair, members of the commission. My name is Tom Houston, 233 South 13th Street, Suite 1900. Appearing to before you today on behalf of Nelson Construction and Development of uh, Des Moines, Iowa, and also Good Neighbor Care, which would be an operator of a facility. Uh, Paul has uh, accurately described the uh, project that my client has. Uh, it's a really a senior living center. Uh, when my client was first envisioning the, the project, they were envisioning a little more density, uh, really envisioned 165 units, a four-story building. Uh, since that time in, in June, the, the, the density has been decreased, has, has declined back to a three-story building. 105 units is really what they're looking at. The, the site plan does envision an additional memory care wing for to facilitate another 12 units at some point in the future. So uh, initially it would be 105 units. I, I wanted to rate a little bit to you of uh, the, the efforts that we've made with uh, speaking with the adjacent neighbors because obviously they've enjoyed their environment outside the city limits for many years. Uh, the city is rapidly encroaching upon their area and so we, we wanted to get to them early. Uh, we first, uh, uh, I first contacted the neighbors in early June. We had a meeting at Southeast Community College uh, in uh, I think on June 16th, according to my information, we had uh, uh, in our sign-up sheet, we had 25 households represented, which I was very pleased with the, the turnout based upon the number of homes uh, along Anthony Lane and Hillcrest Drive. Uh, at that meeting, uh, we made certain commitments to the na neighborhood, number one, that the development that we were proposing was a senior living facility, which generates a very low volume of traffic. Uh, number two, uh, we made a commitment that we would not install any private wells on the property. They, the neighbors had a real concern about the, the efficacy of their wells, and we said, we, we don't need wells, we need city water, and we will be on city water and city sewer. Uh, we made a commitment to the neighbors that, uh, yes, we are seeking annexation because we need access to city services, but we would support their desire to stay out of the city at this point, and uh, if and when they want to be uh, included within the, city, within the city limits, they would still have uh, some control over that process. Um, we agreed on the overhead right now, you'll see that there is some floodplain on the property. That floodplain is heavily wooded right now on the, on the uh, western portion of the property, and we agreed that we will not be touching any of that natural screening. Uh, that natural screening will be separately platted. One of the things that we had to work out with staff is that this property will go through a platting process, uh, but that uh, floodplain area that contains the natural screening will be separately platted and will not be part of this development. It will be preserved. Uh, and, and lastly, we agreed to the, with the neighbors that the, the parking lot based upon the site plan is located north of the structure and which will also help shield any uh, lights from the parking lot, uh, which was one of their requests. Um, I confirmed all that information to the neighbors in a, late, a letter later that week. 
uh, we kind of went silent for a while while my client was furthering design process and that's when they actually reduced the density from the 165 down to 105 uh, and uh, really didn't determine to go forward in, until the early part of November at which I, time I contacted the neighbors and informed them of the change in, in uh, uh, the, the design and the, and the change in the access. During the summer the Department of Roads had constructed a right turn lane on the Anthony Lane which uh, resolved a lot of the, the uh, ad access issues that we were otherwise confronting. Uh, regarding the staff reports, the, the uh, staff report on the annexation of the changes zone I think sets forth very well the reasoning for supporting the annexation of the changes zone. The staff report on the special permit as amended by the uh, uh, a motion to amend that I was able to work with staff over the last few days to get resolved adequately addresses the community unit plan and the residential health care special permits. Uh, just a couple things I wanted to mention on the access. When we first met with the neighbors, we were contemplating access based on the, the Hillcrest Drive access point. Uh, but that is a private road and it's subject to a kind of a complicated easement. And I really had a concern about whether or not that was going to provide the primary access. And as I mentioned, the Department of Roads built the right turn lane in, in the O Street right away for Anthony Lane, which helped resolve some of that, uh, that question, that confusion. Uh, we do have a traffic study that indicates, as you know, a, health, a residential health care facility um, providing for senior living is a very low generator of traffic. Our traffic study indicates in the AM peak period we had generate 16 trips, which is you know, roughly one every four minutes on average, which is a very low uh, generator. And in the PM peak hour, it's 26 trips. Uh, under our traffic study, that the service level at this intersection would still remain at the A or B level, which is very high. Uh, we would be also lucky to have service levels at that level at all intersections. Uh, just a couple other things I wanted to mention. Uh, my client is really still in the design process, and you know, based upon the site plan, there are these memory care wings that are planned, and then the independent and the uh, assisted living are in the, the taller structure. Uh, this is really from the view from the neighborhood so that the memory care units as, as one floor or one story structures really provide some transition into the, uh, the, the taller structure. Um, conceptual, but I think, they, I think they're indicative of what the client really designs. Uh, this is from the, really the east view, really from the golf course perspective and, and the, the type of, that is designed for the area. And uh, other than that, uh, moving forward, uh, I, I guess we would suggest that uh, uh, the, the, the project is, it makes a good use of a property that otherwise uh, would have been a challenge. Uh, we anticipate uh, that, that the, uh, we would be in front of the city council sometime in mid-January uh, with construction probably starting early as probably in May. As uh, Paul mentioned, we need, do need to get city water and sewer to the property before we can start construction, but that's part of the process. We're talking to wastewater and water about acceler accelerating that schedule. Uh, so with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Questions for Tom? I'm not seeing any. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Do we have a testimony in support of the application? Do we have testimony in opposition to the application? Please come forward. We'll need your name and address, and you have five minutes. Hey, my name is uh, Rodney Swartz. I live at 1010 Anthony Lane. And uh, we have met, you know, with the applicant uh, on one occasion, and uh, we expressed uh, a number of concerns, some of which he's addressed. Um, we're uh, the lot, as uh, he laid it out there, rises uh, from uh, this area to the east to a higher elevation. So as you get. Uh, to the east side, which is adjacent to the Hillcrest property. Uh, you're up on top of the hill, and then by increasing the elevation of that structure, you further block the view uh, to the east. So we, uh, the neighborhood generally expressed a lot of concern over uh, increasing the height of that structure on the east. The applicant did acknowledge that uh, typically the facilities that they have have been single level, but they wanted to increase the level of this structure to three uh, 
floors for increased capacity at this site. But uh, the residents of the neighborhood uh, have a significant concern about the impact of that with regard to the view and uh, the other amenities, and especially the lighting that would be coming from that facility and impacting the residential area. We're also concerned about the increase in traffic and uh, they initially indicated that uh, they were going to provide traffic to the facility across O Street in between these two uh, and uh, or through uh, the uh, driveway going to Hillcrest, which apparently they ran into some problems with. Um, so uh, we would have an objection to the traffic coming through a residential neighborhood which sounds like for a substantial period of time until uh, the uh, Department of Roads worked out some sort of other access point for them. And uh, typically they have school children there that are waiting for the bus to come out at their drop off point for people who pick their kids up coming back and forth from Waverly. And I don't think we need any additional traffic congestion at that point. Um, the, uh, we don't see this as really a consistent use with the comp plan. Um, it's uh, basically a rural environment to the east, which is a golf course, and it's a residential here. It's going to change the whole ambiance of the neighborhood, which has uh, been that way since 1980, when, since I've lived there. Uh, we also have concerns about it's uh, going to provide uh, utilities which are going to accelerate desire for annexation and additional commercial development on the other side of the street. And uh, we don't feel that they need to make it three stories high to make it viable in light of the fact that we've got um, many facilities around the country that are only a single story. So that if it, it would uh, go uh, through, we'd strongly object to uh, any increase in height. Any questions? Thank you. Oh, I had a question. Oh, Mr. Schwartz, can you tell us um, the, uh, if we could go back to the, the little map about where your property is in relation to? Um, um, perhaps I could show you. And then also if you could just um, describe a little bit what the screening is between your property and are there some trees there? It's kind of hard for us to tell from the black yes, and white map. That, the, 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 uh, the, this uh, outlaw used to be a nursery. This may be better. Yeah. Thanks, Tom. And uh, as you can see, uh, there's still scattered trees uh, throughout the outlaw. Okay. So it's a, it's a, you know, aesthetically it's a very nice area. Uh, and over here at Hillcrest, uh, it's, you know, basically a golf course, trees, very nice rural area. And uh, the people on the lower end of it, in these houses here, enjoy the wildlife that is in there in terms of the deer, the turkey, and fox, and things like that. And, and the a number of them moved out there to enjoy that type of ambiance. And then looking at that map, can you show us about where you said that the bus stop is or where the kids wait for the bus? Yeah, the bus stop is right along in here. Okay. Where uh, they pull off and the people park along here. Uh, to have their children picked up and dropped off at the bus. And uh, it's what they talked about originally was coming in this way here, and they assured us that they would not be coming through this residential neighborhood. And I'm hearing now from the applicant that that has changed. And the alternative to coming in here was a access in this area here, which would require a large box culvert. And then they were going to bring a street in here and access in here and eliminate this access here and here. But we understood that was some time away. So in the interim, the access would be coming over here to avoid this congestion with the traffic and the school children. Okay, thanks. Any further questions? Yeah, I think so. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you for the opportunity to testify. Do we have other testimony in opposition? Uh, 
My name is uh, Michael Sherbach, and I live at 205 Anthony Lane, the uh, third house over from O Street. And uh, uh, I uh, uh, do not agree with uh, that uh, they want to uh, put a, uh, uh, a uh, nursing and uh, uh, memory loss um, facility here. Uh, the reason why is uh, like on uh, like on O Street going from east to west that's a 60 mile an hour highway okay if the uh, people want to turn into Anthony Lane uh, they're gonna have to slow down uh, on O Street in order to turn left to turn south and uh, this uh, will uh, probably eventually cause possibly a um, traffic accident. And uh, as far as uh, school children, uh, I live on a third house, as I said. Uh, there's uh, uh, parents that park their cars right along Anthony Lane uh, to let their kids off when the uh, school bus comes and they pick up their children. And uh, if you have traffic coming uh, going east, turning into the uh, nursing facility, that's going to create a problem. Uh, there there uh, could be a uh, traffic accident. And the uh, area that, uh, that we live in, looking uh, east, is uh, where they want to uh, propose the uh, facility, is really a um, beautiful area. There's deer, pheasants, foxes, and uh, a lot of wildlife. It's uh, really a super nice place to live. And with this facility going in, uh, it uh, just uh, doesn't make sense uh, for the um, residents. And uh, a lot of the residents that we've talked to that live in uh, uh, East Hillcrest Drive and um, uh, Anthony Lane, they're, they're really um, opposed to it as well. And uh, so uh, I just want to say that, uh, especially with the traffic, with the highway going, uh, it's a 60 mile an hour highway here on O Street on Highway 34. And if people want to turn in uh, to uh, uh, Anthony Lane, of course, they have to slow down. And the cars going uh, west, uh, you know, there um, could be a problem. Uh, and uh, I think that's about all I want to say. Thank you. So, yeah, is there any questions? Questions? Anybody? Lynn? The school bus that is dropping off the kids, is it actually at Anthony Lane and O Street, or does it drive into Anthony Lane? They drive into Anthony Lane. Okay. And uh, they drop uh, it off about a block in? Uh, they uh, drop them off. Uh, I'd say about the uh, about the uh, second house, about the second house off of uh, off of O Street. Then how does it turn around? Well, what they do, they uh, they'll uh, turn around either on my driveway or the second house. Okay. Uh, that's I, how they turn around. I guess my I understand your concern about traffic and dropping kids off. My question is, couldn't they drive in a little bit farther and just get past the road? Well, that'd be up, you know, strictly up to them. I, I really don't know if they, if they, they could. I, I, I suppose they could, you know, but uh, like I say, I'm, I'm the third house over, and that's when the road starts to curve. Okay. And uh, they usually generally park right between the first and second house, and they turn around right about the second house. Okay. And uh, when they pick up their kids, uh, of course, they have to turn in in a private drive and uh, head 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 back. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Do we have other testimony in opposition? How can I have this map shown? Just, just leave it there and she'll make sure it's on there. There you go. I'm going to, it won't help you. 
Oh, some of it's just a repeat, but. Um, uh, we, we need your name and address, oh, sorry. ma'am. Jennifer Streeter, 649 East Hillcrest Drive. Thank you. Now I'm looking at this. Is this coming from the east here then? Is that how you mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. What uh, Mike at Sherbrooke had pointed out was that the 60 miles per hour is how fast people are going till they get up to approximately Southeast Community College. And there were turn lanes that were made. There have been um, accidents turning off Anthony Lane onto. In fact, uh, one or two people have been killed at that intersection. Uh, part of that had to do with the time of day that has, um, and since they put in that new turn there with the stop sign, the stop sign has been run over twice. Um, somebody's run into it and um, broken it down. Um, they said they did a study as far as how many people would be using that area. It's like you've got three shifts, so you've got the employees that will be using that area. You've got 117 people that are resident, or 105. Um, that are going to be there and they wouldn't be necessarily using it all the time But you would have the employees that would be using it in the change of shifts and you would have family members that would be visiting there um, Since it is a there it doesn't seem like a stop sign or stoplight could be put there because that is um, not you know, a residential area. So then you've got, I don't know how that would be worked out as far as um, making that a safer spot. They did make, and I don't know if it was planned to make that right lane as wide as it is, and I think that that really is helpful for people that are turning in there. But for the people that live back, and I live back further up the road on Hillcrest Drive, and you're talking about the buses, and actually, since it's a county road, we have the snow removed there because the bus goes all the way around on that. So the people that are waiting there aren't people that live there. They're people that live in some other, you know, don't live in that area where we live. They just come and park their cars there to, to drop their kids off at the bus or pick them up. They're not related to our particular area. Um, and you had mentioned about having um, walkways, you know, for people to go to. We don't have walkways there. You know, that would be something that, you know, if you decided or whoever makes a decision as far as trying to annex us in, then we would have to, I think, pay for the walkways. We would have to pay for whatever you have to pay for as far as being annexed into, into the um, city, which of course nobody's interested in. We have our own wells, we have our own septic system. So that's part of the problem is when they talk to us, you know, about um, the annexation, us being in between the two. Um, So it seems like to me that what needs to be worked out more is the traffic. You know, it's not, I don't know if I'm so much against having that facility there as far as, but um, more what I would be, I, and he said, you know, the lawyer said that um, they would work with us, which, you know, you know, as far as when the city would decide they wanted to annex us in, which we, you know, nobody's wanting that, but, if, um, I don't know what kind of representation that would be. Because I don't know how, you know, I don't know how much we have as far as rights or what we have to do. Are there any questions? I have Kathy? just a small one. Can you give us just a ballpark estimate? You, you said there are cars waiting for the bus. Are we talking about five cars, 20 cars? I mean, do you, do you know? Five. Five-ish? Five. Thank you. Any other questions? All right. Do we have any other testimony in opposition? All right. Um, do we have questions for staff? I do. <coughs> do we have like a traffic engineer person here? Um, Bob Simmering from Public Works. <laughs> Sorry. And address traffic questions. I'm Bob, Bob Spring, Public Works. I'm wondering at what point do you guys evaluate for um, speed? How, what volume do you have to have or what's the requirements to lower the speed limit in, in an area like this? I think um, 
and this would fall under the jurisdiction of the Department of Roads for that. And there's ongoing observations of traffic and some of the things that would trigger um, lowering speed limits would be the access points, the traffic volume. And I think as you see uh, further development out there with Waterford, uh, you will very likely see some reduction in the speed limit out there just as you do a few blocks uh, west of there. So it'll probably be a while before the speed limit is reduced on that section. I would think so. Thank you. And there, there is, uh, I guess I would add, uh, the long range plan is for that to be a four lane road and possibly at that time that's when that would be enacted. Sure. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. If Bob, before you sit down, I don't know if Tom's map is still there, um, but can you show us where that turn lane starts and stops just to give us an idea of what the, the right hand turn lane to is on Anthony Lane, which would be uh, coming in here. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Any yeah. other staff questions? One question. The State Highway Department's putting in that road or controls the access to that road. Correct. When they come to four lanes, will all those access points still be there or are they going to? try and vacate some of those what the what the conceptual plan is is that between uh, Hillcrest Golf <coughs> Course and Anthony Lane there would be one access point center there. those other two would be removed at that time that access would have both right and left turn uh, pockets built so there would be a, a much higher level of traffic management there would it likely be at the Opposite the access on the north side then definitely yes, okay, so whatever the north side access is right now It's it's that's Both where it may be moved, but I mean they will be uh, in the same location. Gotcha Any other questions Maya uh, for Paul for Paul I was curious it says um, that in 1998 the Planning Commission denied to uh, special permit request um, would you happen to know what the reasoning was behind those denials Garbage facility. yeah there was a special permit for a garden center and there was also a special permit for a limited landfill um, you know I think some of that had to do with um, some opposition from surrounding properties um, but beyond that I don't have the additional details for okay. you and then another question, and it's just kind of how this works. Um, it says that the parking calculations will need to be um, updated uh, to reflect the number of persons in the development. So how, how does that sort of work? How many parking spaces would we be looking at for a 105-unit development? Well, the, the density that, that we've calculated for this special permit is based on persons. And because there's a mix of unit type, independent, assisted living, and memory care, um, it gives more flexibility as, as people move in, in and out of this type of a facility that we just put a cap on the number of people instead of the number of units. Um, so what we've asked for in the table, which shows parking per dwelling unit, is to update that and be um, and, and jive with the the density and relate that to the number of persons. And then the staff parking is separate from that. I'm sorry. And then staff is there any staff parking that's separate? That would be that? figured in as well, mm -hmm. whichever the requirement would be for the for the use. Okay. Paul, other questions for Paul? Do you um, do you know when when the city does annex properties? Do we is there a policy regarding you automatically have to go and put in sidewalks if they weren't there before or curbs or things like that or is it case by case? Well, I think when areas are annexed, existing improvements as a whole are looked at. Mm -hmm. um, I think that there's you know kind of an analysis of what the road conditions are and other improvements and utilities. So I think it would be part of that that discussion. Specific to Anthony Lane, I'm not sure that there'd be a requirement at this time to put in sidewalks unless we're platting additional property or someone gets a building permit. Those are typically the triggers when sidewalks are put in. But Okay, thank you. Any other questions? All right, applicant rebuttal.
four points I want to address for you. Uh, the first one was the height of the structure. And I want you to compare this, again, these are conceptual, but the architectural rendering of the facility, and again, this is from the western perspective, you can see that the taller structure does contain three stories, which, as I mentioned, was reduced down from four stories from the original design. But from the eastern perspective, I want, want to emphasize that the, the structure is actually being fit into the grade, so it's really a two-story structure, so that even though it's three stories from the other perspective, it's really two stories as, because, because of the slope of the, the circumstance and slope of the property. Um, so that w we have tried to address uh, the height, and obviously some of the architectural features is really why we needed the height increase, the height waiver, uh, to be able to uh, have the pitched roof that we need for this facility. Uh, the second issue I wanted to address relates to one of the questions I heard about the access. And we had met with the Department of Roads, and the Department of Roads does have, a, this is an awful busy diagram, but <laughs> hopefully I can explain it to you. Right now this is Anthony Lane, and over on the, the east side is the private drive for, for uh, Hillcrest Country Club. The Department of Roads has a design to consolidate both the driveway and the public street at a common point to match up with 95th Street on the north. And, th and when we met with the Department of Roads said yes, that they've, they've done a preliminary design and that would be their plan and it is uh, certainly not within their immediate budget, it wouldn't be within their budget unless some additional funding is made available, but at some point they will be uh, consolidating those access points onto that common access point at 95th Street which will eliminate the Anthony Lane and the Hillcrest Drive. Uh, the country club access point. Uh, I heard mention of the speed limit. I, I, uh, what we had, as I mentioned, we met with Southeast or met at Southeast Community College, but I'm also aware of, I believe it's called the new uh, uh, career center that's being proposed with LPS that's under construction. And I know they've, they had discussions with the city and the Department of Roads about decreasing the speed limit at that area specifically to address that concern, the safety concern of having the career center there at uh, uh, right east of this, pro or excuse me, right west of this site uh, where the career center is being constructed. And then the, the last thing I would mention is really the chip trip generation. As I mentioned, uh, our traffic study indicates that there's going to be 16 vehicles uh, total on the PM period, or the AM peak period, and then it's 26 vehicles at the uh, PM peak period which is less traffic than single family dwellings generate in neighborhood. So we think it's a nominal effect uh, uh, and uh, be happy to answer any other questions that you may have. Kathy, Tom, could you put your architecture, the first drawing back sure. up there? So um, I just wanna make sure I'm looking at this right. I'm looking, I'm looking east in this picture, is that right? Correct, this is the western facade, right? So it, um, the, the halls or whatever they are that are um these memory yes. care wings can you tell me how tall those are those are single stories okay the so if i'm looking at it from there what i'm seeing is a single story with the the third the three floor kind of stepped back further away is that right that's right and still with the natural screening that's in this floodplain area which was my second question you read my mind can you just um tell us one more time what kind of screening is in that area right there well, there's a lot of natural volunteer trees that we're going to retain in, in the uh, floodplain area, and we are going to in, enhance the screening along our, our western border uh, that will be required. Uh, but we made the commitment that we would just preserve that natural screening because it, it is a very beautiful area in that floodplain area. Okay, so a lot of that is really going to stay in place. Exactly. And as I mentioned, we will separately plat that. There's a lot of reasons to do so, but it, it makes things uh, less problematic for everybody involved if we separately plat the floodplain area. Okay, and then my final question was, and this is a total estimate, but can you guess for me from your parking area how far, if I were walking on that sidewalk over to the street, it would be? Uh, from here over to uh, here? Just from where it hits, um, yep, right there. Uh, it's probably a quarter of a mile, I would okay. guess. Okay. Uh, and, and the one thing I did want to mention is that the new um, right turn lane that the Department of Roads constructed is one of those offset right turn lanes, a deceleration lane, and it's offset so that any exiting traffic can see that they're not blocked by vehicles that are turning in on the turn lane. I mean, it's well designed and it provides ample deceleration room for exiting traffic. Any other questions for Tom? All right. Thank you. 
We'll move forward with entertaining a motion, and I assume you have to call them separately, Jane. I do, and calling for action, annexation 14007, approximately 10.2 acres, generally located at Anthony Lane and O Street, including adjacent O Street and Anthony Lane rights of way. The staff recommendation is approval. Move approval. Second. Discussion. Um, I'll go ahead and talk about, if it's okay with you, the sort of the package instead mm -hmm. of this one thing. Um, <clears throat> we've heard some, I, I appreciate that the, the neighbors came down to tell us their concerns directly. And it seemed like among their concerns, the primary one was traffic. And uh, I think a key factor in the question of traffic is the presence of this deceleration lane that uh, mitigates a lot of the problem of the 60 mile per hour speed limit along O Street. Um, further, uh, both sort of independently and we've had it confirmed by the applicant, the level of traffic generated by uh, this facility is likely to be less than would be generated if the area were developed uh, into uh, single family units, not unlike what's there already. So the traffic impact is uh, on Anthony Lane itself is likely to be minimal. Um, and I see no other reason uh, not to support this uh, package of applications, so I will. Um, I am also going to support the packet of um, applications. Um, I, I just might add, I'm always sensitive to neighbors who really enjoy out lots and the natural beauty in a particular area. But as we've seen repeatedly before the uh, Planning Commission, it's always problematic when people take ownership of out lots that they don't actually own. And so um, even though it's beautiful at the time, they have to keep in mind when there's a vacant property adjacent to what they're buying into that that can be appropriately developed. And it's what's going to happen in, in this case. And I certainly understand wanting to live in an area for its natural beauty, but I think this development is appropriate for this particular lot. Kathy? Um, I'd just like to add a couple things. One, um, I appreciate that the applicant is going to keep as much of that natural area as possible. I think that's really um, commendable and important. Um, also, regarding the bus stop, I appreciate the neighbors coming down. Um, safety is a paramount concern. Um, and I do think that um, with a couple calls to the district, we might be able to get that bus stop moved or relocated um, to alleviate some of that congestion um, and concern for that. Um, but I also intend to support this. Anyone else? I, um, I appreciate the concerns for the speed limit. I'm concerned every day when I drive, drive to work. Um, I see students pulling out in front of tr cars that are traveling 60 miles per hour. And I know accidents have happened there in the past, and I know it, it's, it can be very scary. Um, so I, I would encourage NDOR or whoever needs it to be. I, I appreciate the right turn lane going in, but I think that access road will alleviate some of that as well with combining two entry points down to one. I know it'll be a while, but I think that will help and they'll see some improvement over that. I tend to support the project. I think that it's, it's, it, it's less um, impacting I'm not wording this very well, but there's not as going to be as much traffic as a single family development would be. Right. Um, we'll go ahead and call the vote. Yes. 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 Motion for approval carries nine to zero. Calling change of zone number one four zero three two from AG Agriculture District to R three Residential District District, and the staff recommendation is approval. Move approval. Second. Further discussion. All right. We'll go ahead and entertain the motion. Call the question. Call the question. I mean. Here. Yes. One of those things. Yes. Cornelia. Yes. Beecham. Yes. Four. Yes. Weber. Yes. Hope. Yes. Lust. Yes. Motion for approval carries nine to zero. Special permit number one four zero five two to develop the Gable Pines community unit plan on property generally located at Anthony Lane and O Street. The staff recommendation is conditional approval as revised uh, by the memo submitted today. Move approval. Second. Further discussion? 
Call the vote. Chair. Yes. Harris. Cornelius. Yes. Beecham. Yes. Core. Yes. Senderman. Yes. Weber. Yes. Ho. Yes. Lust. Yes. Motion carries nine to zero. Um, the annexation and change of zone. This is a recommendation to the city council on both of those items. The special permit is final action by the planning commission unless appealed to the city council. Ready to move forward? Yes, please. Thank you. Calling item 4.3 on page 149, text amendment 14017. Amending the maximum building height provisions in the AG Agriculture District by amending Title 27 of the Lincoln Municipal Code to add the AG Agriculture District to the list of districts in which a permitted use exceeding the maximum height permitted in a district may be allowed by special permit. Also amending a section of the code to increase the allowable building height in the AG district for farmstead splits from 30 feet to 35 feet. Staff recommendation is approval. Good afternoon, Sarah Hartzell, Planning Department. Um, two separate items in this one change of zone, and I'd like to address the special permit request first. Uh, originally, this request came to us as a request to just uh, make a wholesale change to the AG district height to increase it to 45. Um, on the face of it, that doesn't seem to be an unreasonable thing to do. Um, AG lots are larger, the setbacks from adjacent properties are larger, so there's plenty of light and air between properties. Um, however, we have to be mindful that AG is often a district that becomes R in the future and is annexed into the city. And when that happens, their subdivision and those, those existing dwellings may be retained on smaller lots. Um, so the, the tact that we took um, was to look at it as a special permit um, to exceed the height for permitted uses in a district. We have this special permit in our um, special permit chapter already and it includes 01B, um, I think that's supposed to be B1 through 4, I'm sorry, I, I must have had a typo there, H2, H3, H4, I1, and I2 districts um, and adding AG to that list. This would do a couple things. First of all, as a special permit, it is mapped, it's tied to that land. When that land comes forward for further action for subdivision or for a change of zone, that would be something that would be part of the research and would be noted. It would give us an opportunity then to make sure that that house, if it was intended to remain on that parcel, have appropriate setbacks that would probably be increased over what the general setbacks for that particular district were. So if it was R3 and it was gonna have a side yard of five, feet then we would be able to say oh no the the side yard should actually be increased by five feet or ten feet or something like that on that particular lot so that's that's one thing that it lets us do um, another thing that it lets us do is to to look at each one of these on a you know case-by-case -case basis and be able to tell with the proposed building site um, are we going to be providing a adequate setback as it sits right now. So it allows us to um, make sure that we've got adequate space in between these structures. The other piece is in the AG height table. So it's in um, 2772. We, um, when we changed zoning back in 1979, prior to that, you might recall that all of the lots out in what they called the um, rural and public use area had a height restriction of 35 feet. Now lots used to be allowed to be one acre, okay? So they were they were relatively small lots. When they did the new zoning, they split it into two districts. One was the AG, which was the 20 acre, and the other was the AGR, which is the three acre. Um, at the same time, there were changes made in the residential districts. The heights were set in all of those districts, and for reasons that I'm not entirely clear on, AGR was set at 30 feet, and farmstead splits in the AG district were set at 30 feet, but all other residential were either 35 or in the more intense residential districts in Lincoln, a higher than 35. So I'm not sure what the, what the thought was back at that time. There was a request um, in 93 from an applicant who wanted to change the AGR district height from 30 to 35 feet with the, um, the statement that you know that would match with the other R districts and with the AG district seemed reasonable. It was supported by staff and was approved. Um, however, that little piece that, that sets the farmstead split height at 30 feet was not included in that application. 
and recall that a farmstead split is a house that was originally built just on a 20 acre or more lot. So this would be a house that would be built with a height restriction of 35 feet, but if you wanted to split it off onto a three acre lot, it would have to be only 30 feet. Doesn't seem to really make a lot of sense. So we're just re recommending that we clean that up and put that at height at 35 feet like the rest of the other R districts and AG districts. Questions for Sarah? All right. Um, I assume you're the applicant too on this one, or uh, no? Actually, Dave Johnson is the applicant. Okay. Good afternoon, uh, Dave Johnson, Studio Nine Five One Eight Hundred P Street. Uh, I am the applicant. Uh, it's kind of interesting. I had two clients kind of show up. Uh, former clients also show up and wanted to both do houses in sort of a. I hate to even say the word, but sort of a castle sort of a look. Uh, and they wanted some fairly larger, uh, taller towers that just exceeded the heights restriction a little bit. So Sarah painted a very accurate picture of kind of how we got from there to here. We looked at a lot of different mechanisms to try to look at a waiver or this out or the other thing. And uh, I'm happy with the special permit process. I think it's a great way to tie it all down and make it very specific to the lot and uh, protect uh, future development that may not happen for 20 or 30 years. Thank you. Any questions? Okay. Do we have any uh, testimony in support of the application? Testimony in opposition. I assume we don't have questions for staff since we didn't have any before. And we don't need rebuttal, so we'll go ahead and entertain a motion. Move approval. Second. Discussion? Um, I'm always happy when we're cleaning things up that don't seem to make a lot of sense and we're ma making our code more consistent. So I'm happy to support um, this text am amendment. Call the vote, please. Here. Yes. Here. Here. Yes. 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 Approval carries nine to zero. This is a recommendation to the city council. Calling for public hearing, item number 4.4 .4 on page 157, special permit number 14047 for authority to exceed the maximum height in the AG district. The property is generally located at North 7th Street and Alvo Road, actually 7201 North 7th Street. Staff recommendation is conditional approval. Are there any ex parte communications to be disclosed? I see none. Sarah Hartzell, Planning Department. Um, the site that we're looking at is um, just north of Lincoln. It is not in one of our future growth tier areas. It is fairly close into the city, but this is an area that's a little bit more problematic to um, get sewer service to. Um, Alvo Road is on the north here. This is North 7th Street, North 1st Street, and the lot in question is right here. Um, this drawing is not to scale, but it does show where the house is going to be built. There is a house on the lot already, oops, sorry, house on the lot already that's going to be demolished and removed from the lot. The new house would be in this site. These are elevation contours along here, and this is a rerouted driveway. Um, the house that's being built, as Dave said, has a architectural feature on it that, that's a, a tower type feature. Um, because of the way that, that heights are calculated, then that pushed this tower a little less than four feet over the maximum height of 35 feet. Um, and this application is to allow um, exceedance of height and um, also defines the area. Let me put this one back up here. In the, defines the area within which that height may be exceeded as a dotted line along here. This dotted line is 200 feet from all of the adjacent property lines to give it plenty of setback. 60 feet would be the requirement on the um, north and south, and 100 feet would be the requirement in the back, so it well exceeds those, those requirements. Um, and the application, we're recommending that this just be a conceptual site for the house because things change when you get out there and start grading and that sort of thing. And also we're recommending that the height exceedance be allowed up to 45 feet, even though only four are intended. Changes in grade or in plans may cause a, a slight differentiation in the, in the height, and we'd just like to provide a little bit of, um, of leniency in that, near, you know, give them a little fudge factor, I guess. <laughs> Questions for Sarah? All right. Do we have testimony from the applicant? 
Dave Johnson, uh, 800 P Street. I don't know if I can say it any better than what Sarah just said. Uh, I will just point out uh, one thing, just to clarify, the house that sits up here, the existing house, this is actually going downhill to where our new house is going to be. So our new house, the floor of our new house is 20 some feet lower than the floor of the existing house that's gonna come down. And actually our tower that exceeds the height is actually going to be shorter than the roof of the existing house. And then the only thing I had is I had a prettier picture, but I'll save that. Thank you, any questions for Mr. Johnson? I don't see any. All right, do we have testimony in support of the application? Testimony in opposition. Did we come up with any staff questions? All right, then no need for rebuttal, so we'll entertain a motion. Move approval. Second. Discussion. Uh, it looks like there is sufficient separation and future separation from potential residential development that the this uh, special permit to exceed the height restrictions won't have impact on, or significant impact anyway, on future neighbors. So I intend to support. Um, thank you. We'll call the vote. Here. Yes. Garrett. Yes. 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 That motion for conditional approval carries nine to zero. This is final action unless appealed to the city council. And calling item 4.5 on page 167, special permit 14049 to exceed the maximum height in the AG district. The property is located at 13760 Yankee Hill Road, South 134th and Yankee Hill Road. Staff recommendation is conditional approval. Are there any ex parte communications to be disclosed? I see none. Hartzell Planning Department. Um, this application is on Yankee Hill Road. Um, 134th Street to the west, Yankee Hill to the south. Um, it is still within the three mile, but it's kind of out on the edge of that three mile area. Um, currently, the, the lot configuration is a lot here and an 80 acre lot here, but there is a, a lot being filed to separate that off onto a separate parcel. And that's important because we don't put two dwelling units on the same lot, so that's, that's under process. Um, this particular one, has similar recommendations that we've got in, in the, you know, giving them a little extra room on the height and making the site conceptual. This does have the 20 or 200 foot setback on these two sides. This is showing a 60 foot setback here. The property over here is actually um, the same family's property uh, and they, of course, um, don't have any issues with maintaining that 60 foot, which is the required um, side yard setback for the AG. So that would be a, a typical setback. Um, I don't think we had any particular other conditions on that one and any questions? Oh, it, it is a sim similar situation with the, with the building where it is a, um, a tower kind of feature in the center of the building. Questions for Sarah? Seeing none, we'll hear from you again if you'd like. Dave Johnson, 800 P Street. Uh, nothing to add over what Sarah said. All right. Did we come up with questions for Mr. Johnson? All right. Um, is there anyone here wishing to testify in support of the application or in opposition? All right. We had no questions, so we will not have a rebuttal, and so we'll entertain a motion. Move approval. Second. Discussion. Um, for all of the reasons previously stated, I'm going to support this application. It seems like a appropriate waiver for the area. Call the vote, please. Here. Yes. Harris. Yes. Cornelius. Yes. Beecham. Yes. Core. Yes. Sunderman. Yes. Weber. Yes. Ho. Yes. Lust. Yes. Motion carries nine to zero. This is also final action unless appealed to the city council. Well, calling our last public hearing on this longer agenda than we're used to. <laughs> Special permit 14051 for authority to exceed the maximum height. However, this is in the B4 Lincoln Center Business Di District, generally located at Canopy Street and N Street. Staff recommendation is conditional approval, and I will note for the record that Commissioner Shear has declared a conflict of interest, so he is allowed to leave for the day. <laughs> Are there any ex parte communications to be disclosed? I see none. 
department. It's hard to follow, sir. But this is a site at the corner of N Street and Canopy, or Canopy and O Street, adjacent to the Lumberworks parking garage. Um, and that is a key factor in shaping the proposal. Uh, the request is to exceed the 75 foot height limit in the B4 in that area. And B4 has many different height limits. But to exceed it um, up to 105 feet, principally for um, one room on the top of the building, um, or that's what takes it up to 105. It's easiest to understand in elevation, and this is the west elevation. Um, they're uh, building a seven-story building. Um, six stories would fit within the 75 feet, essentially. The seventh story requires somewhere between 85 and 90. The reason they're requesting 105 is to put um, an amenity room, essentially a community dining room, on the top of this building. It's a mixed-use building that's being proposed um, with retail on the ground floor. Assisted living on the middle floors and the top floors would be a senior independent living. And there would be rooftop decks and the key feature that they want to put on top is the dining room high atop the building um, on, the, on the west center at the west facade. Um, in the report I've given you, um, key, key factors I think in analyzing it are its position uh, on O and Canopy. It's an entryway building uh, for the eastbound travelers into downtown. Um, and this architectural feature, I think, Kind of organizes that facade and gives it a strong presence on that entryway. The B4 district has lots of different heights. Um, it's our highest limit in certain areas of the B4 where 275 feet are allowed in the core downtown area and in fact as close as 9th Street to this location 275 feet are allowed. Um, no one uses 275 our tallest building with the exception of the Capitol is the uh, US Bank building at about 220. Most of the area east of, west of 9th Street is 75 feet in height, but portions of the West Haymarket development up near the arena are 100 feet in limit. Um, I think you received one letter um, of opposition that pointed out that the um, IDP, the Integrated Development Plan for West Haymarket, which is a broad guidance document, um, talked about three to one being a nice ratio for building height to street width, that would suggest about 40 feet of height on this site. We haven't been using three to one elsewhere in West Haymarket, um, except possible exception. That'd be about the height of the uh, rail yard area, which is on kind of a special site that mitigates between traditional Haymarket and the new development area. Uh, we're certainly far in excess of three to one uh, on the buildings immediately south of the arena, or the arena itself. Um, and lots of downtown streets and buildings um, exceed that ratio as well. There's an academic debate about whether three to one is, is an important ratio. Um, I think it is not necessarily a core downtown kind of ratio. And so we've really analyzed this site for its own characteristics. The B4 district allows anywhere in the B4 for an applicant to request this type of special permit, and that allows you to look specifically at the site and at the project being proposed. Um, the integrated development plan and the downtown master plan and the comp plan um, all encourage downtown housing. They encourage a mix of housing types. Uh, we see it as particularly attractive that this is one of the few downtown offerings for a senior population, and I think the only Haymarket uh, project really targeting um, assisted living and independent senior living. So I think that's a desirable characteristic. We suggest that you condition this approval, which we recommend, on the achievement of the redevelopment plan that's currently successfully being uh, negotiated back and forth, and we're hopeful that, that we will be able to see that come forward. That way we know that we have good public input into the final design. We know already that we're seeing a good quality building, but we will get that 
uh, through the redevelopment process. Um, and so we think that's an important condition for this project. And with that, I would stop. Any questions? You know I can't let you back clean up without asking a couple. Um, Ed, can you tell us how high O Street is right here? Story-wise, are we, it's not ground level. It, it, it's about at the, two, the second story level um, as it comes across. Okay, and then um, in this area, what's the nearest historically significant building? Are there any adjacent? That's an interpretive question. I know. Um, so, I'll, so I will <laughs> interpret. Uh, I think the key, key buildings in this vicinity are at the corner of 8th and O, which used to be the landing spot of the earlier overpass before the 1950s overpass, which was replaced by the present overpass that touches down at 9th. Um, but there are four and five story buildings at the corner of uh, 8th and O, the tallest of those being the Granger um, at the north um, west corner. And then at the southeast and southwest corner are four story buildings. And the grade drops from there to here, correct? Somewhat? S somewhat. Somewhat. The sharper grade is certainly from 8th up to 9th. Um, but there is, it does continue down. We're, we're right at the edge of the um, Salt Creek floodplain here, and that is one of the characteristics. They, they can't put their mechanicals and other features into the basement, um, so that, that's part of what has pushed them upward. Okay. Um, I, as you may recall, was um, part of the Integrated Development Plan Committee uh, when this was all going on. It seems very long ago now. Um, and I know that we had significant discussions about what we were trying to do in West Haymarket, that we weren't really trying to recreate the Haymarket and make it look like the Haymarket, but instead we were sort of stitching together. Would you just um, address the thought behind the IDP a little bit for the, my fellow commissioners? I think, were, I think there were lots of good ideas in the IDP, um, and uh, it emphasized that this area, uh, West Haymarket area, have a distinct modern character, but one compatible with the historic district to which it was adjacent, that it be authentic modern design, not um, directly imitative of Haymarket, but reflective of its context. Um, there, there certainly are within the um, illustrations in the IDP um, some massing studies that are um, taller buildings, maybe not quite as tall as we're, but in the range of what were accomplished further north. Um, in the, the new development area. This site is also um, interesting in that it is on the um, east side of Canopy, not on the west side. Um, and in fact, part of the plan would be to use the remaining elements of the physical Canopy structure uh, on the sidewalk west of this building, continuing the line of Canopy coming all the way down from the arena. So it's, it's somewhat on the Haymarket side of the line, but it is also in the new development uh, package, and it is JPA-owned um, land that's being negotiated for currently. So it's kind of a, a building that's a pivotal one, which I think also is reflected in its entryway mm -hmm. position as you come in. It, it has a unique role. And then my final question, um, you mentioned the redevelopment plan. Um, does that plan go before Preservation Commission as it gets developed? Um, the this project itself and the, the design being proposed um, has been to the um, Planning Preservation Commission twice, um, and they recommend its approval as compatible for that um, location. It, they're not reviewing it in their role as a landmark district in that this is adjacent to but not uh, within the zoned boundaries of Haymarket. Uh, they're standing in lieu of Urban Design Committee because of its proximity to Haymarket, as the ordinances call for. Thank you. Um, as I said in the report, they've recommended it. Any other questions for Ed? Thank you. Chairman Lust had to excuse herself. Here. <laughs> <laughs> her, her voice changed. <laughs> Applicant? Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Carl Grossbeck. I am uh, the president of the Argent Development Company. We're a joint venture with uh, Speedway Properties and uh, RPM Management, which is our senior care provider. Uh, we responded to an RFP uh, uh, 
that the city put forth uh, for liner buildings around the Lumberworks garage back in April, I believe, of this year. Uh, one of the challenges of this site is that it is a very narrow site. It's, uh, uh, it's uh, in fact, almost uh, precludes uh, double-loaded corridors, the things that, you know, help with the economy of sp uh, scale, especially in residential buildings. One of the reasons that uh, we've gone more vertical than perhaps we would in uh, a, a more leisurely urban site like half a lot uh, around the building. Uh, we see this as uh, the having the potential to bring diversity into downtown, although this is the West Hay Market, but we would really consider it the downtown. Uh, we have, uh, if uh, you may not be aware, because we did not go, come before the uh, Planning Commission, but we're uh, the, the development team, not to Speedway, but uh, uh, Arjun is part of the development team doing Block 68, now called Latitude, the student housing project uh, between N and M and uh, 10th and 11th Street. Uh, as a developer, we're uh, very, very uh, conscientious of not only good design and context in the urban environment, but we are really urban developers. Uh, this building is uh, seven, the primary uh, building fa facing Canopy Street is a seven story uh, building with an eighth story, which is really a partial amenity floor. We see it both as a significant piece of our marketing and our, our, our amenity, but also because of the approach of O Street into downtown, uh, this is really a gateway project. We think it's somewhat transformative, uh, and we uh, understand that when, when we're going higher than the, 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 the zoning allows, that this, this does bring you know, some call into question, why are we doing this? Primarily, it is to get to the mass of, of units. We need about 100 units. Uh, for a, this is not a complete continuing care retirement community in the sense that there, we don't have a memory care aspect. That will come later down the line and it will be in a little bit more pastoral setting and, and, and to, to the south in uh, one of a couple of spots that we're looking at uh, right now and that'll be a, a later stage. This is more for the active or, or at least semi-active uh, seniors who uh, want to enjoy both the downtown, the downtown environment, and the university, and all of the things that the, the, the city offers. Uh, we also see that the more residential that we can bring into the community, into downtown, the greater chance the, for the development of really substantial retail, bringing substantial real estate, uh, real, I'm sorry, retail back into downtown. There's some substantial real estate in <laughs> Lincoln, Nebraska. Uh, so when we're, we were asking for this, one of our challenges, is, as Ed uh, uh, brought up, uh, is the floodplain, and the building actually has to be higher than, a little bit higher off the street than we would like it to be. Uh, the second is that we're, as if anybody's watched the progress of Block 68, it's moved very fast. We're using a modular system for the building. It, will be, it won't be wood, it'll be uh, uh, light gauge framing. But there are some depth issues with the structure that we have to accommodate, and that also pushes the, the structure up somewhat higher. Uh, we're about 10 feet below A Street. We're about 23 feet below. 9th Street, so as the, the, the grade drops off, the impact of our being above the 75 uh, a foot really isn't as, as, as substantial as it would be if we were on uh, a flatter section uh, of the downtown. Um, the other uh, condition is that we have to put a, a, a good amount of retail on the, the, the ground floor as a part of our uh, uh, project. And this also raises the, the, the residential, and, and, and we, we applaud the idea of a retail surrounding the building. I th we think that that's a, an important contribution, uh, both to the, uh, uh, the city and the Haymarket, and especially with the, what would be the development of Burkholder Square. Uh, Bur Burkholder Square, Burkholder Alley, you know, we get a very nice connection into the heart of the Haymarket and a, a nice walking condition unless the, the O Street Bridge uh, leaks, uh, which we hope it does not. 
Um, <laughs> so uh, we're, we're, we're looking forward to continuing with this project and uh, we hope that uh, uh, for a, 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 a reading f from the Planning Commission that will uh, allow us to move forward. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Grostick? I guess not. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, is there anyone here wishing to testify in support of this item? Anyone here wishing to testify in opposition to this item? Does anyone have any other questions for Ed? Okay. Uh, no rebuttal, so I'd entertain a motion. With approval. Second. Second. Thank you. Discussion? Well, I'll make some comments, being the previous Preservation Association person on here. Um, I, uh, I participated in the Integrated Development Plan for the West Haymarket, and um, I think it's notable to point out that um, we're not, with, way, with West Haymarket, we're not trying to create um, an extension of the Haymarket. Um, we're kind of stitching new and old together, and we want it to be respectful and reflective, but, um, but modern at the same time. Um, because we have O Street at a higher level here, um, because of the location of this, because it's not right next door to a very short historic building, um, I think this actually works in this location, and I intend to support the, oh, and one more thing I'll add. Um, I also uh, really appreciate Ed including the Minutes of Preservation Association and the fact that they all also see this as a positive project. So I intend to support the motion. Thank you. Anything else? I agree. I think this is a good project. I applaud the uh, developer for what they've done, and uh, I intend to support it. Call the vote, please. Harris? Yes. Cornelius? Yes. Lisa? Yes. Cora? Yes. Sunderman? Yes. Weber? Yes. Motion for conditional approval carries seven to zero. This is final action unless appealed to the city council. This time, anyone wishing to speak on an item not on the agenda may do so. If not, we're adjourned.